welcome back to my channel. How are you today? Today I'm here with a get ready with me on this look. It's been a hot minute since we do something fun and colorful and a sweet panda actually tagged me in a post that inspired me to do something colorful today. Now, as much as I would have liked to be able to copy the look that she tagged me in, uh, that was, wasn't achievable. So we ended up with this look that <laughs> matches my nails unintentionally um, and we're gonna roll with it so if this chartreuse lime green punch you in the face highlighter kind of eyeshadow look isn't your look I really hope you'll stick around for the girl talk because we're gonna talk about anxiety today we're gonna talk about boyfriends that don't follow directions today and uh, we're also gonna talk about some new lipsticks that just launched so it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun get ready with me, I think. And I anticipate once I transfer all the footage that this video is gonna be um, unseasonably long. So I hope that it takes you this long to get ready as well. Um, so if you wanna see how I got this smash me in the face with the leprechaun kind of look, then all you have to do is keep on watching. <laughs> hey guys, uh, do you wanna go ahead and get started? I'm pretty sure I had a very long introduction before this part right here because that's the huge around this neck of the woods. But today we're gonna do um, a fun, colorful look. It's been a hot minute. I feel like I need to get back into the like blue eyeshadow, chartreuse eyeshadow, hot pink eyeshadow swing of things. And I've had a lot of requests on neon makeup um, in my uh, direct messages on Instagram, which I find so weird how there's this like spike in trend right now with neon colors. Now, I've not, I can't say I've been a fan of neon um, eyeshadow looks, um, but I do love the use of bright colors. So today I have sort of some inspiration to get me started, and I'll show you guys when we get to eyes. But aside from that, um, I don't really have a big plan uh, over or about what we're gonna do today. Don't mind the crispiness in my hair, it's full of hairspray, we haven't brushed it out. And lastly, before we get into it, um, I have someone working in my house right now, so you might hear some banging, some sanding, some painting. It just, you know what, it's sound and noise is just part of life, and I have to get used to it. And I'm always like, oh, well, they're landscaping, oh, well, they're walking their dog, oh, well, the neighbor, you know, two blocks down farted, and I just, I, I don't film. So you, today, there is literal noise right underneath us, and we're gonna roll with it. Did you just hear that? Did you hear that? I promise I don't have a, a, a person captive in my home trying to escape, although it does sound like that a little bit. This is one of my favorite lip balms, Brazilian Kiss from Sol de Janeiro. Man, you know, Sol de Janeiro comes out with like, I don't know, hemorrhoid cream, and I like it, you know? <laughs> Everything they do. I think the only thing that I didn't like uh, which is very public was the Coco Cabana cream and I did get a little flack for that But you know what they were like hey Danny. We love you for being honest. Isn't that cool? I love when a brand does that. Okay, I need to stop talking. I need to get on with it All right, you guys I am going to clip my hair back just a little bit That sound downstairs might actually bother me a little bit So if this video is extra sassy, it's only because of the bottled up um, tension and aggression that I'm feeling towards the noise happening downstairs. Um, so this video is gonna be full of chisme because we have a lot to talk about. So this is gonna be like when you are hanging out with your girlfriend and it's like a vent sesh. That's what this get ready with me is gonna be. So if you guys can vent about something perhaps ridiculous, erroneous, or maybe a little embarrassing, please do that in the comments to make me feel just a little bit normal. We're going in with the Ulla Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer, which an update, still loving it. Um, I did get a little bit of comments that were like, well, I don't like that you used it. I don't like that you included it in your favorites because it's a first impression favorite. I'm like, hey, you know what? You can have a first impression favorite on a cheeseburger, you know, when you like something, right? So that's why I disclosed, hey, by the way, it's a first impression favorite. That way you guys can use your um, decision-making skills and decide if it's something that you want to try out or not or maybe wait for the update so the update is um, I don't see this as a product that has a skin type favorite you know how some products you're like oh my gosh if you have oily skin avoid it like the plague or if you have dry skin it's gonna make you look like sandpaper there's a lot of products really have their favorites that they play with I can't imagine this being a very um, Preju prejudicial product, um, but I do see it working probably a little bit better for normal to dry skin just because it's emollient, 
but it absorbs like it full-on absorbs into the skin um, and it leaves it feeling hydrated without feeling silicone-y. You know how some primer, primers make your face feel almost waxy in a good way, like just silky waxy? This one does not. Um, so I really, really, really like it. There are some primers, so this is why it's really important to read instructions on makeup products. There are some primers that require you to go in with your base product, like your foundation or concealer, immediately after before it sets. And then there are some that need you to give some time in between to actually let it set or dry before you go in with your base product. So a lot of products come with instructions, like a little printout, a little handout, or it's on the back of the product. So take a few seconds to read it because some primers require different types of use. This Truth Primer is cool because it, um, it can be used on its own, kind of like a... I don't know, stack in the deck when you don't want to wear makeup. So you put it on after you finish your skincare routine. And you can tell, if you go back from the beginning of this intro to now, the difference in my skin tone. It really just cools it off, makes it look smooth, seamless, um, blurry almost in a good way. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go in with the Pacifica A Light Clean Foundation. This is oil-free, satin, vegan, and cruelty-free. Um, I'm in the shade 26 Neutral Medium, NM. So, upon first impression of this product, I told you guys I loved it, and the more that I use it, I actually like it still. The only um, but I have about it, and it's not really a big but, because I don't have a big but or anything, um, is that it, I can't imagine this would be a very good summer product, because it's, even though it is a um, anti-shine satin finish, it's very emollient. So I would imagine that right now when summer is like two seconds away, um, it's going to be a product that requires a little bit more um, maintenance, um, whether it's a really good setting powder or a really good setting spray. I love it. I love that it's full coverage, but like real talk full coverage, not like Estee Lauder's Double Wear is full coverage, but it's literally like taking a roller and painting on a new face. This one is full coverage, but if you have freckles, they show. If you have a mole, it's going to show. So it's high in pigment, like low in fillers. So it's going to even out your skin tone with pigment, but it's also going to um, give your face a really good, um, a really viable, like you believe it, perfect complexion. You know what I mean? So I really like this new trend that's going on right now um, where people are just posting unedited pictures. Like um, Deepika, I think is how you pronounce her name. She came out with um, her new beauty line. And if you guys go to her beauty Instagram, none of the models' faces are edited, like at all. You see texture, you see lines, you see freckles, you see everything. And I'm like, wow. That's like, that's empowering, you know, because I could imagine that all these little girls that are following Instagram, beauty Instagram accounts, they put on makeup and they're like, why does my face look like this? You know, and they start doing the whole comparison game. Um, and what is it? Comparison is the thief of joy. So they start looking and they're like, my face doesn't look like that. So if as brands, we can start normalizing actual normality, then I think it would do a lot for the confidence in our consumers. Um, anyway, enough about that. I like this foundation, but like I said, I have normal skin. My T-zone tends to be a little oily, but not enough where I could say I'm oily. Oily enough where I get a healthy glow, but not oily enough where I like murder foundations, you know? So it is, as you can tell, let me move the mirror. Let me move the mirror and break my foundation bottle. Um, there's a glow about it. It's called an anti-shine foundation and it's a satin finish, but there is for sure a glow about it. If you don't set it with a powder, it's gonna look glowy. And that apparently is an alien spaceship breaking through the sound barrier. I bet you guys can't even hear it and it's just all, it gets way louder for me, but not for you guys. Anyway, so do you see that finish? It's so glowy. And even when it sets, it has that like glowy hue to it that I really, really like. I'm so over the matte everything. Look, you guys, like so over matte lips, matte skin, matte everything. In a previous Get Ready With Me, someone said that um, their OCD was triggered because I never put foundation on my nose. And I can't say that I don't. And so <laughs> 
When I do concealer only, and you guys know that I'm a fan of doing this, where I don't wear foundation, I just do concealer on my under eyes, a little bit here and on my chin, I don't do any on my nose. And I don't because my nose is full of freckles and I actually like my freckles. But I even went back and I was like, wait, do I not put any foundation on my nose? I always do. And I, and I do because when you see your face close up, you can tell where you haven't put on product, right? So I was like, is that something I do often? I almost went back to verify um, in like previous get ready with me's, but I was like, mm, no, I can't. I can't imagine I actually do that. But anyway, I thought it was a good observation. But now that I close my eye, you guys, do you want to know a secret? I close one eye when I put on my body lotion. When I take out the Sun de Janeiro and slather myself with like two pounds of body butter, I also close one eye. It's totally a thing. So now I can't unsee it. Thanks guys. All right, you guys, we're gonna go in with Tarte Shape Tape in light medium. Do you guys wanna hear something funny? This is gonna be the comedy portion of the Get Ready With Me. So when you see this video, it'll be probably a few weeks since this video went up. Um, my favorites, my current beauty favorites. Uh, oh, actually my cute current beauty favorites where I talked about how much I like this primer on first impression. Um, I got one comment that I'm, I'm struggling really hard to forget because it's so funny. So, and you guys are gonna have to educate me on this because when it comes down to salacious topics and like news headlines and buzzwords and all of that stuff, y'all, I steer away from it. Like I dodge it, I dodge it more than like an ex-boyfriend, you know? And so the whole, the whole joke on my current favorites was my tan right and someone left me such such an angry comment and there were two one of them was like really friendly but this one was like i mean i could tell i ruined her day um she said that i need to stop talking about my tan because i'm only showing you know my my privilege like my white privilege now I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I also don't think I'm n not intelligent. You know, I don't harp about being intelligent, but I also know I'm not stupid. I can't possibly have white privilege, right? <laughs> right? I, I had to ask Sam, I was like, do I get white privilege like by default because my boyfriend's white? That's not how it works. Right? Okay, I need to blend my concealer. You guys know what? Pro tip with Shape Tape Concealer, it's a little watery, so if you put it on, like dot it on your face, and then let it hang out a little bit and kind of dry, and then go in with your beauty sponge, um, it sticks better to the skin. Like it, it, it's more porcelain looking than, than wet and dragged. Like it, it doesn't look wet and dragged or like wet and unblended. So if you kind of let it dry a little bit, and then you bump it with a beauty sponge, it kind of, I don't know, sticks to the skin better. I hate the word sticks because that makes it sound like a gross product, you know, but it does. It sticks to the skin better. It gives you a more flawless, blendy look, um, and it just sets quicker. So, I mean, who, who doesn't like a product that sets quicker? Some products that take forever to set, ain't nobody got time for that. It's like a nail polish. It doesn't matter how pretty the color is. If it takes a year to dry, you're not going to use it again. So... Shape tape takes a while to dry, especially because the applicator is so big. And even if you don't want to use too much product, you can't help yourself, AKA me, you guys know everything in excess. So if you just let it hang out for a little bit and let it settle, then you bump it out and it works so much better. Anyway, so you guys have to riddle me that. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Do I have white privilege? Cause I mean, for me, the joke is just funny. You know, I just, it's funny because it's stupid. <laughs> because it doesn't make sense because it's something so vapid that gives me so much joy when I have a little bit of color on my skin. And I feel like people that are new to my channel might not realize how pale I actually was for a few years, but it only was because of how severely anemic I was. So I was just used to being like, oh, I'm super pale, look how ghastly I am. And my hair was so dark, like it was my natural hair color completely grown out and I was very anemic. So I was like the color of my unblended out concealer, right? And um, so now when I get a little color, it's so easy for me to get color, A, because I'm not anemic anymore, and B, because um, I'm not naturally too tan or medium complected, whatever. And so she was so mad. I'm like, 
I feel bad that I ruined her day, but at the same time, I was like, am I, am, do I even fit the qualifications to have white privilege? I don't, I want to say that's not how it works, but if it is how it works, then I need to find out more about this. <laughs> because I'm Mexican, newsflash. <laughs> My parents are immigrants. Um, I learned English when I was nine, and which is why I still say really, really lame things like I went to put gas instead of fill my tank or to get gas. I went to put gas. <laughs> anyway, so I'm sorry if my joy for my tan is making it sound like I, I feel better than, than other people because, because I don't. <laughs> Now I'm gonna go in with this powder from Charlotte Tilbury. So that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about in this video. I thought it was funny and I was like, this might make some people laugh or it might teach me something new that I wasn't aware of. Another thing to note about this foundation too is a little goes a long way. So um, make sure you really blend it out because you'll see that it almost creates like a layer on your skin. So if you don't drag it out, drag it down, spread it out, blend it out, let it kind of settle, you're gonna see it's, it's a pretty, generous foundation. You don't need that much product. I'm going in with Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush uh, Flawless Finish all over my face. This is going to make me look not so tan because it does have a little bit of a tint to it. Um, I'm in the shade medium, although there's nothing medium about this. This is a very light powder. Um, okay, another thing we need to talk about. So for three days now, you guys, and you have to give me your tips. I've never made any video on stress or anxiety or depression or anything like that because I feel like it's a very buzz worthy topic. It's a very trendy topic. I think that it's a really easy way to get views. So I don't like to talk about it because it's almost as as uncomfortable as talking about, um, I don't know, having an illness or something crippling or something that's very private. Um, I have lightly mentioned um, in a few videos that after I got divorced, I did suffer from um, very severe panic attacks just brought on by fear because I was alone in my home and I had never been alone before, right? So it was a very scary time for me. But again, I don't talk about it because it's kind of one of those things that for me is personal, it's private, it's very um, intimate, it makes me very vulnerable. Um, and I grew up in a culture where therapy, counseling, panic attacks, uh, depression are all in your head, right? It's all in your head, you need to relax. It's no big deal, like stop being so dramatic. That's the culture that I grew up in. That's the climate of um, emotional disorders, right? And so I can honestly tell you that I was on that boat where I was like, okay, you clearly aren't about that thug life if you can't handle your own feelings until I had too many feelings that I didn't know how to deal with um, until it was happening. And in fact, it was happening to me to the degree where I thought I was having like a heart attack, you know, <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was dying. I thought I had to call 911 because I didn't know what this was until I felt it firsthand. So I can honestly tell you, it's very easy to, to know what fake anxiety is or to be able to tell. And it's very easy to know what isn't, but only until you become a sufferer yourself. So I don't want to sound like I'm being insensitive at all. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's easy to have an opinion about it when it hasn't happened to you or when you aren't a where you don't experience it yourself where you have never felt it firsthand it's very easy to have an opinion and then when it happens to you you're like oh now i have an opinion but i'm gonna get through this you know like i my opinion doesn't matter at this point i just want to feel better you guys i forgot how much i love this brow pencil this is the elf brow pencil in taupe Wow, I forgot. I forgot how much of my favorites it was. Then I'm going in with the Essence Brow Gel. We are getting ready, and I told you guys we we're gonna have like girl talk, cheese me. Um, I do wanna talk to you guys about something that I've been experiencing, and I can't actually pinpoint the why. And I thought maybe if we talk about it and some of you guys can relate or can share your experiences, I could figure this out. Look how good my brows look. Someone commented the other day and said why I got microblading if I still fill in my brows, because I wear makeup two or three times a month. 
um, and when I do, I like to fill in my brows to match the rest of my face. Every other day when I don't have any makeup on, you guys, my brows look amazing and they wouldn't look amazing had I not gotten microblading. I had no brows. Like I literally just had this part right here and then a couple spots on the ends, but I had no tails. So microblading completely changed my life with that, uh, in that regard. All right, you guys, the fun stuff. I want to give a little shout out to our panda Adriana. Um, she tagged me in a post on Instagram um, that had this makeup on. Isn't it funny how my nails accidentally match? <laughs> This nail choice was a mistake, by the way. I was feeling a little wild and I don't like it. It looks like I took highlighter to my nails. Um, if you would see a close up, you could see how yucky the texture and the opacity of this nail polish is. But anyway, we're gonna do something similar with our eyes. Um, I don't know how I'm going to achieve it. I'm just kind of gonna go by the seat of my pants. Um, I'm using it as inspiration because my makeup looks never look. Oh, look at that. You can see the classy classy shatter on my screen um i'm just using it as like a baseline example and then hopefully we can achieve something like it if we can't it's no big deal like it's really not going to hurt my feelings but thank you adriana for tagging me because it did inspire me to be like yeah let's do something colorful today anyway back on topic so i posted on instagram yesterday i said hey you guys i have had this pain in the pit of my stomach, kind of like where your ribs meet, right in that center, like where your ribs do that peak, right there. Like this pain, discomfort, yucky feeling, like, I don't know, like if you have a, a boyfriend or a, you know, a partner or whatever, um, and he says, hey, are you going to be around tomorrow? Because I want to talk. You know that instant, like, ugh, you feel in your stomach? Or like your boss is like, hey, um, before you go to lunch, can you come into my office? I have something I want to tell you. And you're like, ugh, that feeling? So it feels like that, except like three times as bad, and I've had it for three days. And the only time that that happens to me is when something really yucky is gonna happen, um, or something happened that is, Something happened that in the back of my mind or in my heart really bothered me and I just like my physical self hasn't caught up to it. You know? <laughs> I know it's weird. So in this Instagram post I said, hey, you know what? I took a mental health day. When my boys left, Parker left, everyone left. It was gonna be one of those days where I am completely by myself and I forced myself to have a mental health day where I didn't do anything. I didn't wash dishes, I didn't do laundry. On days where I say, you need to take it easy, I still do laundry, I still cook, I still clean, I still I still edit, you know, but I just do half as much, which is still too much. And I said, no, I'm gonna sit on my all day and I'm just gonna be in me, be in my presence. And I still haven't been able to figure it out. A lot of you commented and said, um, you really need to convert your thinking process. So anyway, let me get started with this um, makeup. We'll zoom you guys in. We're gonna use two palettes, or rather, I took out two, and if I can't get a combo from these two palettes, then I'm not gonna get a combo anywhere. This is my self-made uh, Coastal Scents Hot Pot Palette. Um, it's one of my favorite tools in my makeup repertoire. I really hope they're cruelty free because this is one of my favorite palettes. And the only reason I like it is because if my brain doesn't work, I just pull it out and I know I can make a look that I'm going to be happy with. And then the other one that I'm going to use is the Urban Decay Electric Palette. Looks like that. That's what we're whipping out. And I just want to have them in front of me so that I can just kind of dib, dab, dip around and get some inspiration. Anyway, so a lot of the comments that I got were change your train of thought. So if you're thinking, oh my God, something really bad's gonna happen, think about it as, oh my God, something really good might happen. Just kind of rewrite the story almost so that you're not bringing that negative energy into your life. But honestly, you guys, it feels so weird because usually it lasts a few hours, it kind of lingers, it hangs out for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna use this color right here in the top corner. I wonder if these have names underneath and then I can just tell you right away what it is. This one is Chamois Nude. Chamois Nude. Um, we're gonna use that as our brow bone highlight. Um, and so, when you feel that way, or do you feel that way, what do you do? Like, what are your tricks? How do you shake it off? Because even Parker was like, can I bring you some medicine? I was like, this is one of those things where, 
I'm gonna sound totally crass and vulgar, but this isn't one of those things where I could just go sit on the toilet and feel better. You know, I wish it was, but it's not one of those things where like Mylanta is gonna help or Pepto-Bismol or any of those GI medications because I don't think it's a GI issue. I think it's a, like a blood pressure issue or a mental issue, like a, like where my mind is at that moment. Something, something that happened, I buried it and I just haven't come to grips with it kind of thing. Um, and so I wish it was easy where I could just go sit, you know, on the potty and feel better about myself. Yes, I still say potty. Um, but it, it's not, unfortunately. And so what is it? Like, how do you guys, when you feel that way, what do you, what do you account it for? What is your explanation? Because I haven't been stressed more than usual. I haven't been, um, you know, feeling feeling negative feelings more than usual. In fact, everything's pretty good. A lot of changes, like the kids are on summer break, um, you know, Parker and the girls are moving in. Um, my job is still stressing me out because I still can't figure out what's going on with, you know, my channel. Um, but, I mean, everything is good and happy for the most part, so I'm really struggling with what it means and I think the whole point of me trying to figure out what it means is what's causing the issue okay now I'm gonna go in with pumpkin pie this color right there and that's gonna be my transition on a large shader brush um, so okay when you guys feel that way and it kind of moves like it moves from the center like the top center of my stomach to about my chest to right here where it's this I can't even, I can't even explain it to you guys. It's this, it's, it's that feeling, that gut feeling, um, like when you know you, you d don't walk home that day, don't walk home. And then you read on the news that, you know, something horrible happened on that street you would have walked home on like that. It's that feeling. Anyway, I guess all I'm trying to say is when you guys feel that way, do you just automatically assume it's your anxiety or your, um, sense of panic that you tend to get when your life is going through certain changes. Um, and if it is, do, how do you deal? Like, how do you cope? How do you, how do you help yourself feel better? Because I tried the snacks. I tried, I tried the dog cuddles. I tried the boyfriend cuddles. Usually those are my three go-tos is my loved ones, my dogs, which are also my loved ones by default, I guess, they go in the same category. So it's either my dogs, because they're like my therapy dogs, um, my loved ones, or, or food. Always food, you guys. Oh man, food. Food is the best, especially chewy stuff. When I'm sad or, or feeling anxious, chewy stuff, like Haribo gummy bears, y'all. If y'all haven't tried the Haribo snakes, you're welcome. So, look, my mouth is watering thinking about it. Haribo snakes are a... Okay, now I'm going to go in with this funky mustardy color. It's called Fool's Gold. Same brush. Look, it's like a barfy baby vomit shade. Um, same brush. So, Haribo snakes, you guys. And I'm doing this as transition, but I'm focusing it more on the inner two-thirds. Um... So Haribo snakes are the same texture of Haribo gummy bears, which are those like jaw tightening, super firm gummy bears. Same texture, except they're like um, uh, Siamese twin snakes. So they're two snakes that are conjoined, um, but one side is sour and the other side is sweet. It's not like unbearably sour either, like warheads. You guys remember warheads? Y'all, I used to sell warheads like low key in the playground with my broken ass English just to make a few bucks <laughs> when I was like 10. <laughs> Y'all, my English was not, not at all even remotely close to what it is now. It was, it's kind of mildly embarrassing now that I think about it. My dad used to take me to Costco and he would buy me the big pack of warheads and then I would sell them for a dollar on the playground. Thankfully, I never got caught because could you imagine immigrant kid that doesn't speak English in ESL classes trying to hustle on the playground? So this is why rumors get started. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to go in with, uh, I need a little bit of a darker brown. I wasn't picking my nose, I was just itchy. This is how rumors get started. Okay, I'm going to go in with, 
oatmeal tan. Oh, this was meant to be oatmeal tan. And then a smaller shade of brush, just a little bit on the tip of the brush and then on the outer V. So, um, what was I telling you guys? Oh man, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, the snakes. So these are, um, sweet and sour. They're so good. And they're like, anytime it's like a chewy, a chewy candy that usually helps me when I'm feeling kind of low in the dumps or feeling kind of yucky. That always cheers me up. Man, I really like this color. How pretty is that? Same thing on the other side. Anyway, so do you guys just automatically, this is gonna be my last question. Do you guys just automatically think, okay, when I get that feeling, it is because I get anxiety. And so you just automatically chalk it up to that. And if you do, what do you do to feel better? Because I don't want this to become a thing. I, I cannot live with myself if this is gonna become a thing. I am completely dysfunctional, unfunctional, like I can't function. That's what I'm trying to say. I can't function. I can't eat anything. I can't enjoy anything. Everything seems to be somber and, and just shadowed by that feeling. And I don't, don't like it. So, um, that, and then the other thing is if you don't think, or if you get this feeling too, but you don't get anxiety or any of that stuff, what, what, what is it? Could I just be super intuitive because something really did you know, something really sad or scary did happen on Monday and I got the feeling on Tuesday when I found out. Now, I, I can't honestly tell you that I found out. I was feeling that way already and then I found that out and so it just, it's not, it's a weird coincidence, right? Like I'm not clairvoyant or anything, that's just weird. <laughs> but, um, okay, anyway, I don't know how we got down this road. Now we're gonna do um, Madly Sunny from MAC. This is one of the most horrendous awful formulas of, um, I keep looking in the viewfinder because you do see how a lot of the eyeshadow has come on this side. I'm gonna have to do something creative. Um, anyway, one of the most awful formulas, awful formulas ever of shadow sticks, but I can't find another color that's like it, so we just keep using it and we're pretending it, it's not as bad. Um, it's, ho it's awful, it's like, it's like rubbing, it's like rubbing chalk or a crayon across your lid, um, it, it's, it's not good. But the color is so pretty that I'm like, <laughs> worth it. Do you see the streaks that it has? Awful streaks. Same on this side. So you guys see how pretty the color is? And I'm like, why can't you just have a good formula? Because you can't have it all in life. You either have a butt or cute boobs. You can't have it both. And if you do, it was expensive. Just kidding. That made me sound like Judgy Judy. You know, the flack I'm always giving people, whatever. Anyway, so that's that really beautiful chartreuse color. I want it to be more yellowy. So what I think I'm gonna do is stop doing this for starters. <laughs> I'm gonna take this lime green shade in the electric palette and I am going to use my finger and I'm going to put that on the lid, but only about half of it. I'm starting to get a cut crease look, which I personally loathe. I don't like it. I don't think it's pretty. I don't, I don't like it. I know I'm going to get hate for this and y'all are going to unsubscribe and leave hate comments. I don't like it. I don't like it. I feel like the cut crease was invented for people that can't blend. <laughs> And is it really that wearable? Okay, I'm just, I need to stop. I'm obviously sassy right now. You guys, okay, we, I told you this was gonna be a girl talk video, so I'm just gonna dish because then it'll make sense why I'm being sassy right now. And why I'm getting cut crease is really bothering me. Okay, then we're gonna take our other finger and the shade Sunflower Petal. Bam, how beautiful is that? This one doesn't have shimmer to it, so I think it might throw off our look a little bit but we can always go in with like a shimmery champagne over it, right? Okay, that's gonna go. I am not even remotely close to achieving the look I had envisioned in my head, but I'm also not hating it either, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of emotional conflict happening. <laughs> there's a lot of emotional conflict happening right now, you guys. So um, stay with me. This, when the relationship gets hard, this is where you don't leave, you don't just bail on me, okay? You stay with me through the hard, through the hard decisions and the bad choices like these two eyeshadows. Stay, stick around, be a panda. All right, 
Let's do the same thing on the other side. So I told you guys, all right, we got a, um, I told you this is going to be a girl talk video. This is where, you know, we, we bond. We're engaging the safe zone filter. We can talk about things like our significant others. So have you guys ever just specifically told your significant other something that is directly related to you, directly affects you, that is directly about you? You tell them to do something in a very specific way. Hey, so-and-so, can you do A, B, and C, but in this order, B, C, A, please? Make sure, it's very important, I'm asking you to do this, which is none of your business, but I trust you and I'm confiding in you. I'm trusting you with this. Can you do it for me? You say yes, you do it in that way, right? So then you turn around and you go rogue, which is the only way to describe it. You go rogue, you do it the way you were told explicitly not to do it. <laughs> explicitly. Um, oh my gosh. You know what? This yellow is kind of bleeding into the tear duct and I kind of like that look. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back with a shader brush and the shade, let's do the barfy color first. What color was that? I'm trying to pull it out without nicking it. Fool's Gold. Let's go in with the barfy shade again. We'll run that along the two colors so that we don't get cut crease. <laughs> Y'all, maybe I'm just salty because I can't do cut crease unless it's completely on accident. <laughs> maybe that's the thing. Like, I can't make cut creases look cool because I'm not an Instagram baddie. Like, that's just it. So we're taking Fool's Gold. Oh, look at that difference. What a difference, you guys. Uh, we're running that right over the two colors. Yeah, so I just feel like, okay, we're a team, man. You know, we're a united front. And if I can't come to you with help on something that you're told to do specifically because the implications otherwise will only affect me, not you, and you can't do that, whoa, it just makes my blood boil, you know? You know what it does? This is exactly what it does. Exactly what Parker's mom says. It just fills me full of cuss. <laughs> when she said that you guys this is a 75 year old woman she's like five feet tall her feet are like this big and she was like boy i ought to tell you it just fills me full of cuss and i'm like yeah that's right <laughs> that's how i feel right now and i know i'm laughing because i'm trying to turn a situation into a more lighthearted matter so that when i do talk to parker later today there is not a homicide <laughs> but i'm just like you know what I feel? I feel betrayed. I feel betrayed because it just makes me look like a jackass. When I specifically ask you to do something and you go rogue, you do it your own way because you think you know better. It's like, no, you don't know better, sir. <laughs> you really don't. Maybe not in this situation. Maybe in others. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt because you are almost 10 years older than me. But in this situation, you should have just said, I can't do it for you. Instead of going completely the opposite way and making me look like a jackass. And that's just exactly what it is. And it just fills me full of cuss, you guys. <laughs> All right, so I just caught a glimpse of myself in the big mirror with daylight, sunlight, whatever, light. And I feel like we took away a lot of the fun from this look with that fool's gold that we put on the transition, I feel like we took away a ton of the fun. It's no longer a really fun look. So let's go in and make a few adjustments. I'm gonna go in again with Thrash from the Electric Palette and just go back in, blend that in nicely. I'm just kind of giving it like a light little rub, just a little, a little rub. Is it even sticking? I don't know. Okay, there we go same thing on the other side and I don't know if you guys can tell but I'm kind of blending it in up as well so kind of moving up into the transition just so that I don't accidentally get a, another cut crease and then get all salty about it <laughs> and then we have to do the lower lash line and then a little pop of color on the inner corner 
Um, now, okay, let's talk about real. Let's just, we, we've been real in this video, so we might as well get real again. Man, I really like it now. So I get eye gunk. You know, like that girl that uh, Chandler didn't want to go on a second date with because she would get the eye goop. Um, I get eye goop very easy, and I think it's because my eyes water very easy. And if I ever have any sort of anything on my eyes that isn't just a nice moisturizer, I get gunk. I get buildup almost. God, that sounds awful. Why are we even talking about this? Um, and so I hardly ever touch my inner corner because it's only going to be there for a little while because later when I go in to remove the eye gunk, it's just going to come off. So I've just become resolute to the idea of not even bothering. I'm taking pumpkin pie and a flat shader brush and just running that on the lower lash line. That'll really blend nicely with, um, this area out here. So it'll give you a very nice blendy look. So yeah, I don't really bother with inner corner stuff that much anymore because it's not really going to last very long before I start wiping my eyes. Um, so let's do a preemptive eye wipe. And then we'll go in with a really small baby little brush like this one. And we'll use the color Sunflower Petal, the yellow. And this is one of those moves where you cannot go beast mode. Do you know how I'm always joking about like everything in excess? <laughs> this is one of those things where if you go in excess, you guys should go look up a Briogeo video that I did like four years ago, maybe five, where I had a turquoise inner corner. Oh my God, that is everything in excess in the bad way. So um, you gotta be really careful where you draw your line, like how much you decide to go over, because it could look bad real quick. Plus, you don't want to look like you have jaundice in your eye. I don't know, you guys. This one, this one looks good. I don't know about this one. Let's fix this one. All right, you guys, we're always candid around here, directly, brutally honest. I'm not really sold on my eye look. Um, but I'm at that point of no return where if I keep going, I'm only going to hate it even more. So I'm going to jump off camera real quick to shake off the saltiness and uh, put on mascara and I'll be right back. All right, you guys, we went ahead and applied mascara and today was one of those, my mascara is not cooperating with me kind of days. So I had to stop. I had to stop before I made them look even worse. So we're just going to roll with it as per usual. <laughs> It's funny how when you are in like a yucky mindset or like a, a negative state of mind, it really translates into all of the other stuff you have going on. So you really have to like shake it off, like feel it, honor it, let it go like as quickly as you can because it's going to taint the rest of your day. Okay. That's just my soapbox for today. Anyway, you know what else I totally forgot to mention? That feeling that I've been having, a lot of you guys sent me comments and said, it's hormones. You were like, oh girl, you're in your mid thirties, get used to it. It's a hormone thing. And I was like, oh yay, I love being a girl. No, <laughs> I do actually. Um, but uh, Tarte Park Avenue Princess, that's going to be our bronzer for today. Um, yeah, I did get a few comments that were like, hey girl, you're in your 30s now, so it totally sounds like it could be a hormone thing. So enjoy that. And I was like, mm, cheers. Cheers to you, my friend. Um, so if it is a hormone thing, I guess that makes me feel a little better because then I can stop really thinking about like, hmm, what did I have a dream about that now I'm being completely bothered about that's totally not even real and I'm overthinking it. I'm creating problems that don't exist. Anyone else like that? I am. <laughs> Someone asked me in my Q&A from yesterday on Instagram, they said, if there was one thing you could change about yourself, not physical, what would it be? I was like, it would be the fact that I am the Royal Highness Queen of Overthinkingopolis. That's me. If there was an overthinking kingdom, I would be the queen, you guys. Oh my gosh. I have never met someone that worries about stuff more than me. I like create problems in my head sometimes. 
I'm like, really, Danny? The good thing is, though, and I have to say this in my favor, look at this lack of blending that's happening over here. The thing that I do have to say in my favor is that I am self-aware. And when you are self-aware of these things, you can stop them before they begin, or you can nip them before they get too big. So I do have to say that. Be self-aware. If you are self-aware of your weaknesses, then you can take the right precautions or steps to kind of talk you down, diffuse a situation, uh, correct a mistake kind of thing. So I um, really like that bronzer. I don't know why I don't use it more often. Um, then we're going to go in with Beauty Counter Blush in Nectar. I think this might be a good color. Really? No? Maybe it's a little too pink for this because this is very barfy yellow and this is a little too pink. What do you think? Hmm. <laughs> Let's try it. And then if I need to layer something on top, I will. So Beauty Counter Nectar is one of the prettiest blushes. And it also is that kind of blush. You guys, I'm a fan of these blushes where they're forgiving. You know, they're like vanilla ice cream. Everyone likes them. Um, it's kind of like Too Faced Papa Don't Peach where it's really hard to go overboard. The texture, the formula, the color, the pigment is very forgiving. So you can, it's, it's very challenging to really go overboard with a blush like this one. So this one, it's actually a very similar shade to Papa Don't Peach from Too Faced. Um, however, this one is a little bit more shimmery or glowy than Papa Don't Peach. Um, so I don't know. Papa Don't Peach has just a really magical formula about it. Speaking of not being able to quit Too Faced, you know, I go on this like rampage about how Too Faced is so inappropriate and they're so disgusting and you know, their dog palettes, like their little clover palette is so cute, but I just, then they come out with DSL lipstick and like pat that powder, whatever. I'm just so confused, you know? It's like that boyfriend that's like emotionally available but is really hot and romantic and you can't break up with them. So, Glover, 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 Glover. Do you see what I mean? Like, how can I denounce Too Faced publicly and then they come back with this? You know what I think it is? I think this is a very slick, passive aggressive move. They're like, yeah, Danny, you wanna quit us? We know how much you like dogs and highlighter, so we're gonna do a dog highlighter. Suck it, you know what I mean? Like, mmm. And then here I am, I'm like, okay, Clover, I'm gonna put you all over my face. Don't mind if I do. Okay, we're out. Oh, and it's, of course it's good. Of course I like it. Of course it's pretty because, because it's a dog highlighter. I mean, what else would you expect from a dog highlighter? Just for it to be magical, right? I just, I just, I don't, I don't have any words. And if Danny is speechless, you know, it's, you know, it's a problem. So let me just do a, a barbaric swatch. Well, it's definitely not the best highlighter I've used. It's very reminiscent of Kevin O'Quan's candlelit, candlelight, candle by the candlelight, whatever. It's very reminiscent of that. Very... It's more powder than highlight. It's more flat than glowy, which might be a good highlighter option for people that aren't very highlighter loving, kind of. I don't know. If I swatch this in the store, this is my thinking face. If I swatch this in the store, I wouldn't buy it. If that makes any sense. If I saw it online and it was online only, I would totally buy it because I'd be like, shiny dog palette highlighter yes i would buy it if i swatched it in the store and i got to swatch it before purchasing it i wouldn't buy it it's good it's not knocking off a painting speaking of how i'm trying to denounce Too Faced because of their vulgarity sometimes and then i talk about my panties all right you guys it's lipstick time i think i'm gonna go in with this liner from buxom called undercover lover just kidding it's just undercover um let's see I think it might be a little too brown. A little too brown. Let's see, I'll do the outside. As if I need bigger lips. 
For lipstick, we have two options. Yes, I know I lined my lips a little hilariously. It's totally intentional. Um, I don't know if I want to do Sugar Daddy from Too Faced, one of my favorite lip colors ever, or Fuel from Urban Decay. Let's do, let's do Fuel from Urban Decay. I think it's a little more orangey yellow and not so much pink. Let's try. Oh my God. Speaking of lipstick, you guys, how good is this one? No, speaking of lipstick, have you guys seen what's going on with the Jaclyn Hill lipstick launch? Oh my gosh, I feel so bad. It's like none of her, none, none of her launches ever go by without some major, major, major issues. I'm like, she needs to get a curandera up in her house or something because that poor girl, I feel awful. Could you imagine like every launch that you have palettes with Morphe and brushes and all that stuff, something always happens. So annoying, like I'm annoyed for her, but I can also um, feel annoyed as a consumer, you know? I'm still a consumer. I'd be pissed if I paid $300 for lipsticks and you know, they were weird. <laughs> anyway, I, st I still wanna buy some though. <laughs> like it's not dissuading me. Like now I wanna buy them and be like, are they actually grainy? I want to try it for myself. <laughs> I really like this combo. So the combo was Buxom Undercover with Urban Decay Fuel. Fuel, I think Fuel comes in two different shades, like Fuel 1 and Fuel 2 or something like that. So it's just the original Fuel and Undercover from Buxom. I really, really love that nude. It's been a while since I'm, I'm like very impressed by like a nude combo. I'm like, boring, but kind of digging it. All right, you guys, that completes this look. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I will list and try and link all of the products that we used in the description box below. I do have to say it's kind of refreshing to be digging through my makeup and finding old lipsticks and liners and things like that that um, I haven't used in a while. It's kind of exciting. I also hope that you've enjoyed watching this get ready with me while I wear um, my athletic gear. Um, and the last thing that I really hope is that you enjoyed the girl talk. I have a lot of questions for you from within this get ready with me from if you feel the way I feel, if you have a partner that doesn't follow directions and then totally puts you in a tough spot, like all of that stuff. I really want to get this conversation going. I love how much interaction we have had in the comments lately and I I would like to keep encouraging that. Um, I think it's cool to be able to communicate with one another. Um, I read all your comments. Am I able to answer all of them? No, I try my best. Um, and usually if I post a video, I stick around for the first two to three hours in the morning um, to answer your comments. So if you want me to answer one of your comments, make sure that you watch if you can when the video goes live. And I post my videos between 6 and 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. So I think it's kind of a wonky time for most of you, but it is kind of around the time that most people are actually getting ready for work if you are in the United States. Anyway, I really enjoyed my time with you guys. Let me know if you enjoyed this look and if you want to see more colorful looks because I know that they um, uh, have slowed down quite a bit, um, but I thought it was really fun. And I think the next look I want to do is, hold please. The next look I want to do, I have to have, seriously? Right now? You, right, right now? Like, is this, is this appropriate right now? You don't even speak English. Like, what are you going to contribute? What are you going to contribute? ¿Qué les quieres decir? Eh? Platícales, pues. ¿Qué les quieres decir? If the video is long enough, might as well make it a few more minutes long. Right? What do you want to tell them? You want to tell them you're kind of wonky and old and not feeling so good? Hmm? You have a doctor's appointment coming up. No, no, no. No, sir. Hey, ¿Qué les quieres decir? Say hello. My name is Tatapo. I've been around since day one. I'm 13, grade three, heart murmur. I'm my mom's favorite. Mm -hmm. My little bit of San Diego here. Oh, that's my murderous killer down there. You hear her? That's the murder dog. That's the murder dog, Sophia. What is up with you guys? You're nervous, huh? Why are you so nervous? Is it because Miguel's downstairs working? Huh? Is that why you're nervous? Why are you so nervous? I love you. Who's my most handsome dog? Con el niño más guapo. Eres tú. Tú eres el más guapo de toda la casa. 
Y sí, tú eres el más guapo. Te amo. Yo te amo. ¿Qué tienes? ¿Qué tienes? ¿Qué tienes? The thing I was saying is the next colorful look I want to do is with the Blue Moon palette from ColourPop. It's been a hot minute since we talk about ColourPop in this neck of the woods, y'all. But look at that. Could you imagine just blue? Blue blue with chartreuse would be really pretty too. So, hmm, I'm gonna, maybe after I turn off this camera, I'll do a little dab, dab, dab. Anyway, that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up. Seriously? Oh my gosh, you guys. <sighs> All right, tell him. Tell him. You know the spiel. You know the spiel. Say, please give us a paw up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, <laughs> this coffee break is over. Bye, y'all. <laughs>